Let's go over how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. I'll give you a quick recap of how to factor and then we'll solve a couple examples. Solving a quadratic equation like this means finding the values of x that make the equation true. The values of x that make this equal to zero. Those values are called the solutions of the quadratic equation. Now if we can factor what we would call this quadratic expression on on the left side of the equation, if we can factor this, that makes solving it really easy. And here's an example of a factored quadratic expression. What we see here is that x squared plus 9x plus 14 is equal to the factor x plus 2 times the factor x plus 7. Now all of our factorizations of quadratics will look like this. They will be x plus something multiplied by x plus plus something else. And so the question becomes, for factoring, how do we figure out what these two numbers need to be? How do we go from a quadratic like this and figure out that 2 and 7 will be the numbers to create our factorization? Well, it's pretty easy, and I think you'll be able to understand it better if we start with this factorization and then just quickly multiply this out, and you'll see why 2 and 7 are the numbers that work. So we already know that this is equal to this factor times this factor, but let's actually multiply these factors together to see why this works out. We just have to make sure that we distribute everything so that x needs to get multiplied by x and the x needs to get multiplied by 7, which gives us x squared plus 7x. Then the 2 needs to get multiplied by x and the 2 needs to get multiplied by 7, giving us plus 2x and plus 2 times 7. Now, are there any like terms that we can combine in this expression? Well, certainly the 7x and the 2x, right? That's 9x. However, I'm going to write it slightly differently just for the sake of this explanation. It's 7x plus 2x. We said that's 9x. And of course, that's the same as 7 plus 2 x. That's how many x's we have. And then we still have the 2 times 7 there at the end. Also, order of addition doesn't matter, so let me just swap the order of the 2 and the 7 here to make things a little more consistent. Now you can see why 2 and 7 are the numbers that work for this factorization. It's because they're two numbers such that their product, 2 times 7, is the constant in the quadratic expression and their sum, 2 plus 7, is the coefficient of x in the quadratic expression. That's why 2 and 7 are the correct numbers for this factorization. For counterexamples, 1 and 14 multiply to 14, but the factorization x plus 1 times x plus 14 is not going to work. If you expand this out, you're going to get 15x because 14 and 1 add to 15, not 9. This is not the correct factorization. Similarly, 5 and 4 add to 9, so you might try x plus 5 times x plus 4, but that would be a bad choice, because 5 and 4 don't multiply to the constant of 14. So this is not the correct factorization either. The two numbers that make up the correct factorization have the property that their product is the constant and their sum is the coefficient of the x term. That's why this factorization works. Now let's try some examples and we will of course solve them as well. Let's say we want to solve x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. To begin solving this quadratic equation, we want to factor the expression on the left. So we're going to be looking for two numbers that multiply to 8, because that's the constant, and that add to 6, because 6 is the coefficient of the x term. Two numbers that multiply to 8, there's a few options. You might try 1 and 8. Those multiply to 8. However, they don't add to 6, they add to 9, so that's not the right choice. Perhaps we could try negative 2 times negative 4. They multiply to 8. Uh, however, they don't add to 6, they add to negative 6, so those won't work either. However, if we try 2 and 4, 
both positive, those do multiply to 8, and they add to 6. These are the correct choices for our factorization. Now, coming back to our quadratic equation, the thing on the left, x squared plus 6x plus 8, we can now factor. We know that it's equal to x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 4. Thus, using the factorization, we can rewrite this equation like this. And this one is very easy to solve. We've got a product of two numbers here, x plus 2 times x plus 4. But the only way a product of two numbers can be 0 is if either of those numbers are 0. So there are two possible solutions, x plus 2 equals 0, or x plus 4 equals 0. Those are the only two possibilities that would make this equation true. These two equations then give us our final solutions. If x plus 2 is equal to 0, well that means x is equal to negative 2. And if x plus 4 is equal to 0, that would mean that x is equal to negative 4. And so we have two possible values for x, negative 2 and negative 4. Those are the solutions of the quadratic equation. Here's a second example. We want to solve x squared plus 6 equals 5x. This one looks a little bit different because it's not written in what we would call standard form. So we should rewrite this equation in standard form, which means we're going to have 0 on the right side of the equation, and on the left side, we will write our quadratic expression in order from the x squared term, then the x term, then the constant. So on the right, we want 0. Currently, we have 5x, so let's subtract 5x from both sides of the equation. That's going to give us x squared plus 6 minus 5x, and now on the right side, we have 0 as desired. The last thing you might want to do is switch around the 6 and the negative 5x, because we like these things to be written with the x squared term, then the x term, then the constant. And so if we do that, we have x squared minus 5x. Don't forget that the minus is attached to the 5, so we have to move that too. So it's minus 5x, and then plus 6 at the end. This is equal to 0. Now to solve this equation, we just need to factor as we did previously. Thus, you can see, we'll be looking for two numbers that multiply to 6, because that's the constant, now that we've got it in a standard form. And we need these two numbers to add to negative 5, the coefficient of the x term. Again, it's critical that we've written it in standard form to see that the coefficient is negative 5. There's a handful of options for numbers that multiply to 6. 6 and 1, of course, is a possibility, but they don't add to negative 5, so it can't be that. 3 and 2 is an option. Those multiply to 6, uh, but they don't add to negative 5 either. They add to positive 5. So then we should try negative 3 and negative 2. Those numbers do multiply to positive 6, and they add to negative 5. Those are the correct choices for our factorization. So x squared minus 5x plus 6, well, we can factor that. We know that's the same as x plus negative 3 multiplied by x plus negative 2. And so this needs to be equal to 0. We then go through the same process as last time. This is called the zero product property, that this number or this number need to be zero in order for this product to be zero. Regardless, we get these two equations. x plus negative 3 is zero, or x plus negative 2 is zero. Solving the first equation will give us that x equals positive 3. That's just adding 3 to both sides. And then solving the second equation gives us x equals positive 2, adding 2 to both sides. And those are the two solutions to this quadratic equation. So that's an introduction to solving quadratic equations by factoring. Again, you want to make sure that your quadratic equation is written like this in standard form. And then to factor it, you're asking which two numbers multiply to the constant, which is typically written at the end, 
and add to the coefficient of the x term, which is typically written in the middle. These two numbers will give you your factorization. You can then apply the zero product property in order to get your solutions. It's certainly possible for a quadratic expression to not be factorable, like this one here, and so you would need a different strategy to solve this equation. It's also possible that you solve a quadratic equation by factoring and get only one solution. In this example, the factorization would be x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2. And if you set these equal to 0, you're only going to get one solution, which is x equals negative 2. Just a couple things to keep your eyes out for. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.